Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter along with Michael Fairchild behind the camera and his production crew all from the Purdue Alumni Association bringing you another show this one uh, featuring the Black Cultural Center right behind me. Um, we're doing this in support of Black History Month which is going on right now and so logistically I can tell you we're at the corner of 3rd and Russell Street right across the street from Honors College classes have been in session now just about three weeks or so and so uh, Purdue is underway once again and as Michael swings around you get to see the Honors College as well as a great view down 3rd Street which I remind you has been kind of turned into a pedestrian corridor um, these days but the snow's coming down and it's just a gorgeous winter day here on campus the Black Cultural Center behind me opened up in 1999 in this location Previously, it was three blocks down on University Street, and we'll hear more about that in a second. But just a wonderful facility architecturally and with a variety of the programs going on. We're going to go inside and meet Renee Thomas, their director, and she's going to really walk us through history and the program offerings they've done and the great offerings they have brought to campus. And to do that, we're going to go through the portal. The portal right here resembles the entrance to a traditional village. And so it's the first of many of the architectural features we're going to talk about today. So we'll go inside, get out of the snow, we'll see you there. Okay, we're inside the facility now, gorgeous facility, and meeting our director, Renee Thomas. Good morning, Renee. Good morning, Mr. Salter. Good to be here. We're going to enter in what I think used to be the living room, uh, our, our uh, meeting room, but now actually it's turned into a wonderful mural. You want to talk us through that? Certainly. This is our former lounge area and we converted it to exhibit space and we call it the Journey Through Black Excellence, which tells the narrative of the Black Cultural Center over our 50 year history. And we actually started in uh, the 1960s as was when Purdue University began to see larger numbers of African American students enrolling on campus. And after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., black students began to think about and challenge the university in terms of providing a, a home away from home and a sense of belonging. So they staged a silent protest uh, in which they met in the union building. They asked everyone to return the next day with a red brick. And at that time, similar to what we see now on campus, there was lots of construction going on. Red bricks were easily accessible. So they got the red bricks, met in the union building, and had the red bricks placed in a brown paper bag. They staged a silent protest in which they marched from the Union Building to the steps of Hubby Hall. When they arrived, they opened those brown paper bags and set the bricks on the stairs. The students presented a list of demands to the university president. And President Hubby was presented with nine different demands. And out of those demands was birthed the Black Cultural Center. Okay. We actually opened our facility in 1970, and it was in an old residential house. Um, and this is a, a, a picture of that house that we were in uh, during that time period. And uh, two directors served on a part-time interim basis. And then in 1972, Mr. Antonio Zamora was announced the first full-time permanent director. And uh, under his leadership, uh, we introduced the Performing Arts Ensemble program. Uh, Mr. Zamora launched four different student performing arts ensembles in dance, drama, creative writing, and choral music. And they became the performing arts ensemble, which we call the heartbeat of the Black Cultural Center. It's our way Excellent. of engaging yes. students and communicating the African American experience through art and culture. So we do what we call edutainment, which is the combination between education and entertainment. So when you go to hear uh, the Black Voices of Inspiration, not only do you hear some fabulous music, but you also learn about the role of traditional Negro spirituals. I'm gonna proceed here uh, to highlight our cultural arts series, which is an opportunity for us to invite guest speakers and performers to the university campus for public lectures and presentations. We launched the series under Mr. Zamora's leadership and had Mr. Muhammad Ali on campus. Oh. We're all champion boxer. Okay. Uh, sold out Elliott Hall of Music in I terms bet. of attendance. 1975. Exactly. Also in 1975, the Society of Black Engineers was birthed at Purdue University. And uh, they now represent a national organization. The six young men who founded the Nesby organization met in the old Black Cultural Center. And if you look on the wall, you'll just see a cascade of individuals who have 
spoken at Purdue, sponsored by the Black Cultural Center. We're really proud because it reads like a who's who in Black America. People like Maya Angelou, uh, Gil Scott Heron, uh, poet Sonia Sanchez, the wife of Dr. Martin Luther King, Coretta Scott King was here at Purdue, and mo the majority of these were all sponsored by the Purdue Black Cultural Center. I want to highlight Sandra Agee, our first homecoming queen, black homecoming queen. That is correct, and it was during, uh, you know, a, a period of time in the 1970s, uh, late 1970s, uh, which we were experiencing some racial turmoil, so it was sure. wonderful to have an African-American homecoming queen. I remember that, yeah. And then again, it just continues on and on. Uh, Taurus Richardson, uh, the first oh. black Purdue University student body president, Individuals like Dick Gregory, Nikki Giovanni, and Ozzie Davis have come to the university. Big names, all big names. Amazing. And over here, we have the new facility. Exactly. 1999 is when we moved to this particular facility. This facility is the first campus, uh, first building at Purdue University that was designed by an African-American architectural firm, Walter Blackburn, and he incorporated some very distinguishable African elements in the design, and I'll highlight a couple of those. I see Renee Thomas arrived around 1996. Yes, okay. exactly. In 96, <laughs> I was promoted to uh, director. I actually started at Purdue in 1990. Excellent, excellent. And then our, 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 one of the things that I'm most proud about is our research tour experience. Our research tour experience is an opportunity for students to travel throughout the United States. Uh, we engage the students who are involved in our performing arts ensembles, and we pick a particular geographic location study the African contributions to that area. We visit cultural sites, museums, we have master classes in the various disciplines, and we put all that information together and then do a major stage production in which we present to the campus community. Our first one was launched in 2002 in which we went to Harlem, New York and studied the Harlem Renaissance. Since that time, we've been to uh, Charleston, South Carolina to study the Gullah Geechee culture. We've been to Memphis, Tennessee to study the blues. Uh, We've been to Detroit, Michigan. Uh, so we've been all over the United States looking at the contributions of African Americans. And then um, in 2013, we actually launched our first study abroad program that is open to students to travel with us during May Mester. Uh, we've been to Ghana, West Africa. We've been to Brazil. We've also been to Cuba as part of the study abroad program. These research tours sound very unique. They are unique, uh, and, and the uniqueness, particularly for the research tour, is that not only do those 40 students that travel with us have exposure to those that uh, uh, historical contributions, but we present it in a, in a staged production uh -huh. at the end of the semester. So very unique um, and have gotten a lot of re uh, national recognition on that as well. Excellent, excellent. And then the, uh, the, the wall concludes here uh, with a couple more of our recent uh, speakers and performers that we've had, such as Melissa Harris-Perry, Angela Davis, and Harry Belafonte. Well, that's, that's uh, quite a collection, very, very well presented in terms of all the, uh, the, the historical things and uh, performing groups. And again, it sounds like you did get some national recognition for some of these. Exactly, yes. We've been uh, acknowledged by the National Association of Black Cultural Centers as being one of the finest black cultural centers on the college campus. Wow. Uh, the fact that we had an African-American architect design the facility, we're one of the few campuses that has a freestanding black cultural center facility. Excellent. Excellent. Well, good for you and all you think you, you've done for it and for the campus. Uh, we're going to, going to move into the lobby area and see some of the other offerings uh, of the building. And uh, one is the uh, Zamora Performing Arts Studio. Tell us some things about that. Certainly, as part of our 50th anniversary celebration, we renamed this the Antonio Zamora Performing Arts Studio. This is the place in which our performing arts ensembles uh, rehearse and do many performances. Uh, it's a specially designed room and that is two stories so our dance troupe can have uh, space to uh, do their lifts and spins. It's a wood sprung floor. And uh, we have some theatrical lighting so that whenever we do our more intimate performances, we'll do them here. And then we also take advantage of the Hall of Music facilities for a major staged production. Excellent. I remember when it was being built, the wood sprung floor is always, it kind of moves, I guess, just yes. a little bit. So quite a unique offering. We're going to move on to the desk area now. 
because it also has some architectural significance. Tell us about that. Yes, the, the uh, receptionist desk is whenever you enter the building, you're typically greeted by one of our student employees. Here at the receptionist desk, which has a somewhat of an odd shape to it, is actually inspired by the hull of a ship. And the hull of a ship has significance for the African American experience because many of our African ancestors were transported from West Africa to the United States as part of the Middle Passage. And they took that journey in the hull of a ship. Um, it was a fairly horrific journey um, in that they were tightly packed in the hull of a ship. Uh, but we use it as a, as a form of inspiration for our students to let them know that if their African ancestors could survive the horrors of the Middle Passage journey um, and then go into slavery, that Purdue University should be a piece of cake for them <laughs> academically. I like that. Never the case, but I we like want that. their students to know uh, <laughs> that they need to uh, move their mindset from a surviving at Purdue to a thriving at Purdue. Great perspective, great perspective. And here's an artwork. Yes, this particular piece was commissioned by Robert Peppers. It's called The Spirit of the BCC, and it represents the four performing arts ensembles, uh, the Black Voices of Inspiration, Jahari Dance Troupe, New Directional Players, and we like to say the Haraka writers are inside the house. Since this painting, uh, we've introduced several other ensembles, including our Black Thought Collective, uh, which is our scholarly ensemble. They do research on the African-American experience. The Gordon Parks Ensemble is our visual arts ensemble, and we have a tremendous amount of artwork here at the center. And our newest ensemble is called the Purdue Express, which is a recruitment ensemble. They do a 30-minute stage production in which we work with the Office of Admission to recruit and to educate students through a theatrical and musical performance about Purdue University. Excellent. And another artwork I hear by a famous artist. Yes, Derek Forger uh, is the artist of our Black Boilermaker. This was uh, done 10 years ago as part of our 40th anniversary celebration when we premiered Black Purdue. And he did the depiction of the Black Boilermaker. You'll notice in his tool belt, he has a brick as opposed to tools red brick, and the right. red brick is to symbolize <laughs> you got it the protest that happened in 1968 you'll notice there's a piece of mortar that's on the on the brick that's to remind us as an institution we still have uh, room to grow as it re relates to our diversity and inclusion agenda and on the lip of his uh, hard hat you can't necessarily see it from here but the year 1894 is inscribed and that year has significance because it was the year in which Purdue University produced its first African-American graduate. David Robert Lewis from the College of Engineering graduated 1894, just one generation removed from slavery. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and the artist's name again? Derek Forger. Okay. And uh, he is really uh, excelled in terms of his artwork. He has a major exhibit that's currently up in New York City. And I think he was just featured on CBS Sunday Morning. Exactly. I think I saw a feature yes. there. Yes. Okay. And then behind you, uh, maybe a, a listing of uh, the directors that have been here. Exactly. Uh, Senior Buchanan was the first director uh, here at the Black Cultural Center, followed by graduate student Johnny Houston, who served a, a very short tenure. And then Mr. Zamora, uh, who is our director emeritus, was appointed full-time director in 1973 and continued to his retirement in 1995. Uh, he just recently passed this uh, year, and, uh, but he has his, his mark is all over the facility in terms of his contributions to the success Excellent. of the center. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's a good sampling of what's here on the first floor. We're now going to go up to the next floor and uh, have a look around up there. Okay, we have arrived at second floor, came up the elevator, and now we're on the second floor just outside the library, but again, uh, quite a few uh, significant architectural features here. Renee, why don't you tell us about those? Certainly. Uh, the balcony here is to pay tribute to those enslaved Africans who worked as blacksmiths. Um, if you've ever traveled down to Savannah, Charleston area, there's a tremendous amount of wrought iron work, and the balcony is to pay tribute to the enslaved African labor. Also, if you look down on the carpet design area, it has a very distinguishable uh, design in it, black and gold, Purdue University's colors, but more importantly, we like to say it has an adinkra symbol incorporated in the design of the carpet. And that adinkra symbol is a windmill pattern, and it means the ability to overcome difficulty in life. Circular patterns are very prominent in African architecture, so you'll notice a lot of our rooms and locations have that circular pattern as well. Excellent, excellent. Let's move into the library. 
and uh, yeah, the Black Cultural Center also has a special collections library and that most of the books and materials are related to the African American experience. Uh, we have a wonderful collection of both books, journals, and uh, periodicals available for the campus community to utilize. Okay, and anybody can use these? Yes, it's open to the entire campus community. We're part of the library system, so if the student is online, they can access our books and materials online as well. Okay. Which reminds me, actually, your building is available for anybody. If they'd like to have receptions or get-togethers or staff meetings or cultural events. Exactly. We welcome uh, them to take advantage of the uh, resource that we have here at the Black Cultural Center for meetings, performances, whatever, uh, however they would like to utilize it. And we encourage our students to take advantage of it as well, okay. not just for the African-American community, but for the entire campus community. And then recently, I think you've also formed a partnership with the local art museum. That is correct. Yes, we have a phenomenal exhibit up throughout the month of February. Boyd Smith is a Purdue graduate and has an exhibit up at the art museum. And uh, please visit the art museum as well. An excellent tie-in with the community. And then uh, I guess I, uh, I want to conclude uh, remembering a great story you told us uh, earlier as I was quizzing you about some of your favorite speakers on campus. And it's hard to pick one I know, <laughs> but I think you had a very interesting story about one of those. Oh yes, Dr. Maya Angelou. When she came to campus, the Jahari Dance Troupe from the Black Cultural Center was the opening act. Uh, many people don't realize it, but Maya Angelou was also a dancer. And whenever we circled up uh, prior to going out on stage, she went through each dancer, cupped her hands on their face, and gave them a positive affirmation. It's a very emotional time period uh, and a special memory for many of those students. And they'll never forget that, I suspect. Yes. Not like you won't. So anything else uh, that you'd like to add? I'd just like to add that this month we're celebrating Black History Month. The Black Cultural Center has a variety of programs and activities planned. Most of them will occur, or all of them will occur virtually. I encourage you to visit our website and take advantage of our programmatic offerings. Excellent. Well, we thank you so much for sharing your facility. We appreciate and thank you for the wonderful work that you're doing for the uh, Cultural Center here on campus. I think you'll find uh, this has been a very interesting Tuesday tour. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back and visit, and come back and visit the Black Cultural Center. Hail Purdue.